I do a sub or dom. I'm hollering. Hey Sharnies, where y'all been? It's Unique and I'm back with another video. So today I wanted to come and bring y'all a few Q&A questions just so that y'all can get to know me a little bit better. Give y'all a little tea on some things that we haven't talked about before. So if y'all want to hear these questions, then definitely stay tuned. Okay y'all, so let's go ahead and get to these preguntas. All right, the first question is, what's your favorite book or movie and why do you love it? Okay, so my favorite book is the Bluefort High series. I used to read those back in the day. And I don't know, I just felt like the storylines were so relatable to so being a young girl in school. And I read them actually when I was in middle school. So it kind of gave me some like context of what high school would be like. It prepared me a little bit. Being able to have those books, I feel like they are really good coming of age books when you're transitioning from middle school to high school. So those are really, really good. And I would say that one of my favorite movies is The Notebook. I think it's just because I am a sap. I'm soft as foot and I really, really love love. I love seeing people be in love. I also like really can resonate with the adversaries of loving somebody that the people around you might not necessarily want you to be with i just love how spoiler alert they end up dying together at the end how beautiful is that they was able to try off no matter what obstacles they had went through like in their teenage years found each other again in their adult years end up having a family making a family and being with each other ultimately until they both passed away so that's really, really sweet and I love that movie. So if y'all ain't seen a notebook before, then go check it out. The next question is, if you could only eat one type of cuisine for the rest of your life, what would it be? Baby, I'm picking Mexican food because it's so many ways you can slice it and dice it. And I feel like no matter what diet I'm on, whether I'm pescatarian, vegan, Mexican food will have something for me. So that's what I would eat. I would eat all the things from the Mexican cuisines because I live, honey. I live. Stick it down. Stick it down. What's your favorite way to relax and unwind after a long day? honestly something very very simple me being in my Taurus energy that sleeper sofa if y'all not subscribed to the membership channel go ahead and join because I did an apartment series and showed the sofa that we end up getting and I was like can you sleep on it and when I walked up to it it said sleeper sofa and I said baby yes baby it's coming with us okay so i love a good sleeper sofa moment okay and i'm not talking about a pullout couch that you get at a hotel i'm talking about a sleeper sofa the sofa that feels just as comfortable as a bed so getting cut up on that having a real real warm blanket and a real warm toasty house with some youtube baby that's all the unwinding and dining i need okay <laughs> next question is what's the craziest thing you've ever done or the biggest risk that you've ever taken. I would probably say the biggest risk that I have ever taken was putting my heart into the hands of somebody who did not reciprocate that energy for me. Aww. Just being very gullible and naive when it came to relationships, looking for love in the wrong places and putting my heart and my body into somebody who didn't reciprocate that energy for me which ultimately left me heartbroken once they decided to pick up and move along. I feel like giving your heart away to people who don't deserve it is a really big risk to take because it takes so much time to be able to heal through what you go through when it comes to being with people like that. So love is the biggest risk that I have taken, for real. Next question, what's some random fact about yourself that not many people know? I would say a random fact about myself that a lot of people don't know about me is probably my range within my music taste. I can really like enjoy some different kind of music that's not traditionally culturally black in the sense of not your go-to hip-hop, R&B, soul music. Like I really enjoy different artists that you probably don't just think of immediately that black girls will enjoy. And I think it's probably like due to my background and my environment that I felt like limited in the type of music that I like. But I really do love a good punk rock song. I love a good pop song. I do like 
some country music i also enjoy music from artists similar to like amy winehouse for example i really enjoy her music lady gaga kimbra carrie underwood kelly clarkson all those type of artists i really really enjoy their music but i don't find myself reaching for those type of artists because i don't really have other people that i can connect with around those artists so when i have my moments where i just want to pop on paramore or i have a moment where i want to pop on selena or something it's just like okay i kind of feel like the odd one out but yeah that's something that people don't know about me i have like a wide music taste and i also really enjoy music from like the 40s for example so a good ella fitzgerald a good billy holiday eats okay jazz me down baby jazz me down what is one item of clothing that you couldn't live without an item of clothing that i can't live without i would probably say leggings because leggings is so comfortable and you really just don't have to try they're versatile they go with anything they're cheap <laughs> And I know y'all probably like, girl, why you want to wear cheap clothes? I like to save my coin and spend coin on experiences and eating. So I don't really like spending my coin on clothes. You can get a whole bunch of leggings for $20. You really could. Even in these days, like depending on where you go, you can get a whole bunch of leggings for $20. And honestly, y'all, I don't be with the jeans. I feel like jeans are so uncomfortable leggings is where it's at and that's one item of clothing that i cannot live without what is your biggest pet peeve one of my biggest pet peeves is having to be punctual having to be on time gets on my nerves so freaking bad because i don't what having to be on time y'all <laughs> gets on my nerves so freaking bad because i don't like being on time i feel like there's so much pressure to like show up at the time or earlier than the time I just want to come when I come my business or my service or what it is that I'm offering is just accommodated you know what I'm saying having to meet a schedule and being on a schedule I don't like that I like to schedule out my calendar to know like what's happening what I'm doing around what time I have to be there but me showing up at the exact time is very very uncomfortable for me because I feel like it takes away my agency. I feel like it takes away my freedom to have to clock in at a specific time. And so, like, my pet peeve is really professional workspaces and, like, having to punch a clock. Biggest of them all. I hate it. Are you a sub or dom? I'm hollering. What's the worst date you've ever been on? I would say the worst date that I have ever been on was a date that was never even created in the first place. Y'all, I don't know how y'all experience was was like when you was a young buck coming up but i cannot stand a you want to chill nigga i can't stand a you want to chill that don't take you to get food that will literally just want to be like laid up in the house just want to on you but like don't make an effort to actually date you the worst dates are the ones that never happen the worst dates is people who constantly think you just want to pull up on them and you want to just sit in their car, roll up, whatever. After a certain amount of time, I'm going to need to see something different because I get really, really bored with people, relationships. I get bored real, real easy. So if every time that we hanging out, we just sitting in your car or I'm just coming over to your house, being in your living room, being in your bed, that's not it for me you get what i'm saying so like the worst date ever could be a date that a nigga never plans that's that's literally the worst i can't stand and you want to chill like they're irking and yeah no ban them ban them all what is your guilty pleasure i would probably say watching or listening to sex podcasts because i really enjoy listening to women especially talk openly and candidly about their experiences within their sexual life. I also like hearing dilemmas around sex and relationships. And I also enjoy hearing like tips about sex and relationships. I feel like because I grew up in a very sheltered environment and also due to the fact that I grew up in a cult, AKA the Southern Black Church, it would be so frowned upon to talk about things like porn sex 
making love, being in love, having love that was like outside of just this cookie cutter idea of what marriage was supposed to look like. They would shame you for not being pure or living up to purity culture. Just teach you all these ideals around like saving yourself before marriage and you're not supposed to talk about sex, you're not supposed to have sex. <sighs> okay, so once I was able to go to college, find my own way and really just find different content that was appealing to me, I think that being able to have the representation of sex podcast, it really, really just helped me learn so much about sexuality, sex, the world, and all that, and how, like, different people is navigating in their relationships, as well as, like, expanding upon my knowledge around relationship dynamics in general, because I had this very black and white view of what relationships were supposed to look like, and I think that due to the fact that I started listening to sex podcasts, it's opened me up so much to unconventionality of, like, what actually is happening out here that a lot of people try to keep on the hush hush so shout out to all the sex podcast girlies out there that's doing their thing i have been listening to lady bear lately horrible decisions is a top top one for me another one i like is sex with emily that's a good one definitely the last two is like my go-to no matter what if y'all know of any other podcast then definitely let me know in the comment section down below because i love to hear about it oh poor minds that's a good one i couldn't really get into what is it cocktails what is it called i can't remember what it's called it's called cocktail something i couldn't really get into that too too tough but yeah those is my guilty pleasure <laughs> All right, sub or dom? Okay, so that's submissive or dominant. I would definitely say I am submissive. Being dominant does nothing for my femininity. Like, <laughs> I know you can be a dominant feminine, but for me, I'd rather be like a soft feminine. And being dominant is just so exhausting. I, I just can't, I don't like it. I really, really enjoy being a submissive person. I feel like because I have to go out, get to the bag, get security, get stability, be a leader at work. When I come home, when I'm in my intimate space, I don't want to have to dominate. I literally just want to be pampered, loved on, taken care of. Dominance to me is not my MO. I literally tried it. I tried to find different ways to be a little more like forthcoming and just like very like strong in my like stance and my move and it's just it's not me y'all like i'm a sub at heart i enjoy being a sub and i think that like when you have somebody that you're in a relationship with who gives you mutual respect who is caring and affectionate and loving it's really really easy to be submissive to them because like you want to have like that feeling of being led i know i have so many non-traditional values but a value that I really hold on to that's like still very heteronormative is me being the submissive one in my relationship. That's where I like to be. That's where I enjoy to be. I love the soft life and that's what I'm here for. That's my makeup and no matter how hard I try, I just, I don't have a dominant bone in my body and I don't think I ever will. Okay, next question. Are you an early bird or a night owl? Definitely an early bird. I can I, let me tell y'all something. I do not like to be up in the nights. I don't like night parties. I don't like hanging out at night. The only thing y'all can probably get me to do at night is go listen to live music or hear a concert, but I probably would even leave before the show is over. I be tired. <laughs> Be tired i'd rather wake up do what it is that i gotta do if we planning on going out let it be a day party please don't invite me out at night i will fall asleep on you i will fall asleep in the club i be tired i don't like being out in the night i don't like being up in the night give me sleep baby or give me death period <laughs> Next question, are you still with Flame? I am very much so with Flame. Me and Flame is locked in now like we never been before. Next question, what's the weirdest dream you've ever had? A lot of them, a lot of them be weird. <laughs> My 
dreams be like so continuous y'all they go on all night like from the moment i'm sleeping i'm dreaming i don't have no night where like i'll go to sleep and it's just black anything above four hours i'm dreaming if you could change one thing about yourself what would it be honestly y'all i would have long hair that's why i love my wigs coming from where i come from having short hair was just not it if you had short hair you'll be teased you'll be bullied you was not the pretty girl and i would say like just being the ugly friend i felt like if i had hair i wouldn't have been the ugly friend i think i was the ugly friend just off the strength that i had short hair and it was like one of the biggest things that people used to pick on me about they used to also pick on me about like how big my lips was, how big my head was. But as I got older, I feel like I just grew into those features. The funny thing about it is like people pay to have lips like mine. You get what I'm saying? And I pay to have long hair like the long hair girlies. So if I could change anything about myself, I would want the hair that like falls down. My hair would grow, but it don't retain length and it don't like come down like i've never seen my hair to my shoulders or my back like ah, i would gag like god knew what the f he was doing because if my hair dropped to my back y'all wouldn't be able to see me let me tell you i probably ain't get that long hair for a reason because i would have been a cocky bitch. <laughs> i would have been a cocky bitch with some long hair let me tell you my hair just grow like this like up and out up and out up and out but it don't never like fall so yeah long hair that falls <laughs> next question um who is your celebrity crush i'm not i don't even know celebrities <laughs> what <laughs> y'all my camera just did some crazy shit that i never even seen before <laughs> but we're back and we're better and we got it together okay because I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was going on at all. Who is your celebrity crush? First of all, I don't even know celebrities to be crushing on them like that, like for real, for real. But I can tell y'all some of my crushes from back in the days, but present day, I don't crush on nobody. I'm not in the know about pop culture enough to know who's who that's doing what and what they do and who they do. I know their voices and their songs, but I don't even be knowing their faces and I barely be knowing their names, so. My celebrity crushes like growing up, I would say I was a Omarion girly when he was in B2K. Omarion was my man, okay? Thank you to my man. He was on my wall. Thank you to my man. I used to twerk on him. Yeah, period. <laughs> and in addition to him, I have Lil Bow Wow. Okay, not Bow Wow, not Sean Moss. I do not support. I do not support. I do not support. Do not get it twisted. Do not make this a clip. Lil Bow Wow. I liked him a lot and then i had a short short little romeo stage a short stint just 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 short i could have loved playboy puppy dog boys it was lloyd baby i told y'all i love some long hair and he had the straight back braids y'all know that was an era the straight back braid boys had their movement and they had their era brown skin he had the <laughs> lloyd was my man street love that whole album baby I think it was the brown one. Couldn't tell me nothing. I had that on the CD player like it wasn't nobody business. I knew all the songs. I knew exactly how the video would go. And I'm going to listen to that y'all tonight because that was my sh After I got out of my Lloyd era, I was probably in high school by this time. So y'all know I said I liked my little eclectic music. So The weekend was my man. Thank you to my man. Canadian boy, he was the one that made me want to go to Toronto because I wanted to find him. And I'm like, y'all probably like, big jump. <laughs> Lil Bow Wow, Omarion, a little stint with Lil Romeo, Lloyd, and then The Weeknd? Yes, baby, I changed. I changed. The Lord delivered me. <laughs> By that time, I was very into like the weird, eclectic, artsy boy type look. I was so into that and I always loved gothic culture and I just felt like he was a lovely mix between all of that. It wasn't until I went to college and I went to this feminist college and I had to sit here and decipher his lyrics that made me stop liking him. But before I deciphered them, I was in love. That was my man. Thank you so much, man. Okay, next question is, my phone keep locking up like, it's me. 
you're not being stolen i promise what's a bad habit that you have been able to overcome i guess like toxic promiscuity there's levels to promiscuity promiscuity can be very empowering but it can also tank your self-esteem horribly and I would say that like overcoming toxic promiscuity where I didn't value my body, I didn't value myself, didn't set boundaries. I kind of just let people come in and do whatever they wanted to do with me and like leave me high and dry. Those type of things I don't accept in my life no more. So I just, I don't feel like I seek outside like for you know the comforts of having a partner or having a man like to be there to like make me feel good about myself i'm kind of like trying to find ways to feel good about myself whether i'm with somebody or not so yeah toxic promiscuity i had to overcome it and i'm so happy i did because i'm healthier my body is like cleaner i don't feel like i have so many energetic cords weighing me down i just feel way more like lighter and free and just healthier overall all right the next question is how often do you have sex it's not that often i love very like soft vanilla ways of intimacy the actual acts of having sex even though i like listening about it i like hearing other people's experiences I feel like because my work drains me so much and because like I really don't have the ultimate satisfaction of life, I rarely feel sexy to like be in a sex mood. I don't just walk around thinking about sex. I literally have to hear about it, see it, or go find it and then it registers. Oh yeah, sex. And then I'd be like, yeah, I want to have it. So I really don't be having sex that often because I be tired and it takes a lot of energy that I don't have a lot of times and I think part of it is because I have hypertension and so with the hypertension I be on medicine that like be trying to slow my heart rate down and so that also make me tired and I just do too much too much work I feel like if I didn't have a job I'd be a rabbit but my job makes me feel so unsexy that by the time I'm home, I just want to sleep. Yeah, to each her own, to each their own. We was looking at something. I don't know if it was the cut or the end, but this dude was like 14 times a week. I said, oh, no, nah, I could never. I could never. If a nigga asked me for sex 14 times a week, you got to go. We can't be together. I couldn't do it. I couldn't. Like, my little, mm -mm. If you had to have a conversation with your ex, what's the question you want to ask them? I want to ask them, like, when I left you, were you okay? Were you devastated? Let me tell y'all, when I say I pulled out of there like a thief in the night with no intention on coming back, I left so much down there. I had to chalk it to the game. I couldn't do it no more. And if I had to ask them one thing, I would ask them, like, when I left you and didn't come back, were you okay? Or were you devastated? What are the most frequently used emojis in your text conversations? I don't know. Let's see. I know it's the crying laughing eyes for one. Okay, y'all know the two little um stars that I do. Them, the double heart, the eyes. I got the 100 emoji, a flame emoji because, period. <laughs> I also got the green check mark. That's how you know I done it. Like, if I hadn't seen the green check mark, I did it. Winky face, weary face. <laughs> I got the praying hands and I got the thank you Lord hands. I also have the crying laughing eyes because I'll get that in a minute. Like, that's like my go-to. I don't even know why it's not even on the first like row. Shower emoji, red heart, light bulb, crying eyes with the long tears, a TV, a microphone, a balloon, this one. I also have palm trees, a jet, and a highway. If y'all don't know what that means, go listen to Drake, search and rescue because I just want to go on the holiday mommy. That's it. Dolly mommy. Take me on the holiday mommy. I need it in my life. I need it real bad. And then I got like the frustrated face with the, what do you call that? Smoke coming out the nose, like real Taurus energy, real bullshit. You know, not the eyes, but the side I like. <laughs> that one, thumbs up, face palm, a car, this one, a gas pump, and the hugging one. <laughs> Next question is, what is the most embarrassing thing you've ever done in front of someone that you like? I would say the most embarrassing thing that I've done in front of somebody that I like was not be myself. Curating myself to be what I think that they wanted so that they could find me attractive. Just not thinking that unique being unique was okay and they could possibly, there was a 50-50 chance that they could possibly like me back just from being myself. Not being yourself and trying to get somebody is embarrassing. Don't do that. Okay, the last question is, what was the last flirty text you sent? Girl, I don't think I be sending flirty texts like that, but if I was going to send a flirty text, I'm probably going to send you some monkeys with a little bit of splat. The girls that get it, get it. I 
hope that y'all enjoyed this Q and A, me answering 21 questions, so that y'all can get to know me better. My camera is dying, so I gotta go. I would have kicked it with y'all a little bit longer, but hey, I don't make the charge. The charge that made me. Okay. So if y'all want to connect with me further, my social media will be down in the description box down below. I also have a podcast called Journey Free Podcast where I talk about my life experiences through conversation. So if y'all into podcasts, come on over, give it a listen. We lit over there or whatever. If y'all want to see my lifestyle vlogs, they are up on my membership channel. So go ahead and click the join button to see exclusive content outside of these videos. I want to thank y'all so, so much for taking the time to watch this. And I will see you on my next video. Bye, Journey.